It gives me great pleasure to introduce this year keynote speaker, Henry Hobie Bryce Wedler. Hobie is a graduating student in chemistry. He holds a bachelor degree in history and chemistry with a minor in mathematics from UC Davis and is expected to complete his PhD in chemistry this summer. He has a keen interest in how things work, which ultimately fostered his deep interest in science and history. Born blind, Hobie has successfully navigated a sighted world and currently is both researching computational organic chemistry and developing methods to make chemistry research more accessible to the blind. In 2012, Hobie founded a nonprofit organization, Accessible Science, which leads annual chemistry camp for blind high school students and uses chemistry as a lens to show them that their lack of eyesight should not hold them back from pursuing goals no matter how visual they seem. Hobie was recognized by the White House in 2012 as one of the President Barack Obama's champions of change for enhancing education and employment opportunities for people with disabilities. During his time at UC Davis, Hobie developed a deep passion for educating the public about the technical aspects of food and wine. His successful work in food and wine industry led him to be recognized on Forbes 30 under 30 list in the food and drink category, which highlights young industry leaders that are redefining exactly what we want to eat and drink. Hobie plans to return to Sonoma County to teach chemistry and to embark on a career as a sensory and flavored scientist. Please join me in welcoming Hobie Wedler. Can you believe they let the blind guy into the chemistry lab with all these caustic and dangerous chemicals, and now want to give him a PhD? You gotta be kidding. <laughs> what I say today is a humble attempt to express what I believe we're all thinking. I am so grateful for this opportunity, and I just want to share a few thoughts with you. Curiosity is the foundation of research. I have a deep curiosity for how things work. When I was young, I heard the loud trash truck drive by each Thursday. My curiosity was piqued. I could not see the truck, but I knew something major was in my place at my own home. I needed to feel it and understand how it worked. Each week, my parents would walk with me to the edge of the street and wait for the truck. We befriended the driver, Leonel Fabian, who taught me over my early years with tremendous care how each part of this huge and exciting machine worked. Curiosity drives discovery, and that is what brings us together today. Now I want to tell you a little story. Because I'm from Petaluma, the egg capital of the world, and because of our campus artwork, you all know the eggheads, let's talk first about eggs. Eggs are amazingly engineered packages of nutrients encapsulated in a beautiful shell. Let's consider three methods of egg preparation. First, we have the scrambled egg, which has little distinction between the white and the yolk. It's tasty, but not very elegant. Next, we have the fried egg, cooked hard and fast on a griddle. The fried egg is flat, hard on the edges, and soft in the middle. It's delicious, but not resilient, and breaks immediately when dropped or poked with a fork. Finally, let's consider an egg prepared sous vide by heating it to 60 degrees centigrade in its shell for nearly an hour. I don't mean to get nerdy. The sous vide method uses water to gently cook food at low temperatures, morphing it into something impossible to achieve by traditional cooking methods. 
The sous vide uh, UC Davis graduate students are like the sous vide egg. The sous vide egg is soft and pliable but exquisite. The white firms up around the yolk and the yolk transforms into something brilliant, rich, and so very different than it began. Now, I will say that UC Davis graduates are like the sous vide egg. We have been changed forever. We have a new ways of thinking about situations and solving problems. We have a new respect for what it means to work hard and accomplish our goals. Faculty, staff, friends, and family have shaped us like the sous vide method has shaped the egg. We have been transformed by UC Davis. We are just one university among many, but what we do as an institution is tremendous and reaches out to our borderless world so broadly. The College of Mathematical and Physical Sciences is in close collaboration with the Mars Rover Project. The College of Agriculture recently developed a state-of-the-art olive research center and the Department of Viticulture and Enology has transformed the world wine industry over the past 40 years. These are but a few examples of the groundbreaking work done right here. And it is because of this depth and reach that we are so excited and lucky to receive graduate degrees from UC Davis. The first thought I'll share with you is about mentoring. My journey at UC Davis began in 2005 when I started my undergraduate career. I had the choice between UC Davis and a little known university just a few miles west of here called UC Berkeley. I'm so happy I chose Davis. The mentoring I've received here at UC Davis focused my curiosity and has been indispensable to my success. My passion is for chemistry. However, I thought the visual nature of chemistry could be an obstacle, so I earned bachelor's degrees in both history and chemistry. Realistically, guys, who wants the blind lab partner? I don't know. That's why I made this decision early on. I fully intended to pursue a graduate degree in history until I met my mentor, Dean Tantillo, sitting just to my left. I met Dean in the summer of 2009. Dean had more belief in, his ability, in my abilities than I did, and as great mentors do so well, he saw a future for me in organic chemistry that I could not yet envision. Dean always told me that I was just as capable as my sighted peers of earning a PhD. I didn't believe him at first, but I followed his advice, kept working, and here I am today. After a successful summer working in Dean's group under the guidance of an outstanding mentor and teacher, Dr. Chris Hammond, I knew that with some assistance, I could perform computational chemistry research alongside my sighted peers. Now, Dean and I share the belief, Dean and I share the belief that blind or visually impaired people should not be held back from pursuing their dreams, no matter how high the barrier. We founded Accessible Science, a nonprofit organization that uses chemistry as a lens to demonstrate this message to blind students. In 2012, our work was honored at the White House when I was named one of President Barack Obama's champions of change. This is one example of countless mentor-mentee relationships fostered here at UC Davis. I want to extend a special thank you to three people who have made a huge difference in my life, and honestly, three of the most keen minds I've ever met. Thank you, Sarah Cohen, Dr. Ryan Pemberton, and Tim Newman for your dedication to helping me achieve my goals. I've learned so much from each of you. I learned how to not be so stressed out and nervous up on stage giving commencement speeches from Tim Newman. I learned a great philosophy of life and a great set of values from Dr. Pemberton in various states of sobriety at Third and U Cafe. And Sarah taught me 
how to be intelligent when solving problems and thinking about how to come to solutions that make sense in such an intelligent and elegant way. I have so many people to thank. You all have mentors to thank as well. Thank them today. Thank them tomorrow. Thank them in 20 years. And whenever you think about it, Mentors empower us to believe in ourselves and face challenges. Do you remember the feeling of that first day of graduate school? Didn't it feel like a great unknown? Wasn't it scary at times? Look at us now. We took risks and accomplished our goals. This brings me to my next point, facing challenges. We don't always get what we plan for. Let me give you an example from my life. A few years ago, late at night, I was in the shower and thought, remembered that I had to go outside and cover the barbecue. I thought, well, I'm just going to get out of the shower, cover the barbecue, and casually go to bed. So I put on my shorts and shoes, grabbed the barbecue cover, and out I went. When I returned, I was casually walking through my living room like I always do on my way to the bedroom when something long and furry struck my bare leg. I thought it was a skunk. I've always been afraid of skunks. They're silent, they bite, they carry rabies, and when they're agitated, they make us smell pretty bad for a long time. I was leaving the next morning early to host a wine tasting event back east, and believe me, skunk spray was not the aroma I was looking for. I froze in that moment, as most of us do, that moment of saying, oh my gosh, what's going on? And luckily I heard a meow a short while later and realized it was just a cat that got in when the door was open. My point is that whether you're going outside way too late at night to cover your barbecue or embarking on a new chapter of your life after graduation and graduate school, it doesn't always go as you plan. I face extra challenges every day. In the sighted world, my life is full of risk-taking. Every time I cross one of the bike-filled streets on campus, like the roundabout at Hutchison in California, I literally put my life on the line, not to mention crossing Russell and Anderson on my way to Trader Joe's during peak commute hours. I frequently travel independently. When I arrive at a congested hotel lobby in New York City, for instance, I could either stand there helplessly waiting for assistance, or I can listen to the sounds of the lobby, find the check-in desk, and casually head up to my room like everyone else. I choose the second option. Do I always know exactly how to find the check-in desk? No, but I can figure it out. Do I sometimes ask for a bit of help along the way? Of course! And we should all be willing to ask for help when we need it. If there's nothing else I tell you today, I want you to know that it's okay to ask for help. When I get to my hotel room, I embrace the challenge of figuring it out on my own. What's the worst thing that can happen? One thing I've learned is that body lotion is excellent hair conditioner, <laughs> and shampoo is really terrible lotion. Allow me to make this metaphor explicit. Very soon, all of us are going to be graduated and enter the world and need to figure out what we want to do. So the challenge of figuring out the world will be like me figuring out that hotel room. Embrace the challenge, take the risks, and love it. The point is that we need to face challenges and take risks to succeed. Not only do we need to be willing to take risks, we also need to be willing to fail. It is not just about the goal or the path. It's about the ability to get up and recover when we fall. The last thought I'll share with you is about people and legacy. In 2013, Professor Ke Sarah Keller from the University of Washington delivered an impactful chemistry seminar. What I remember most about her talk was not the technical content of the lecture, 
but the sage advice preceding it. Dr. Keller explained that it is not about the next paper you write, the next grant proposal you receive, or the next milestone you reach that you define as your success. She made us think about the people who are important to us and reminded us that these people are our foundations. She made us realize and made us promise to love and respect these people more than our professional careers. This advice will surely stay with me forever and I'm proud to share it with you today. As you sit in this room today with all the wonderful people who are here to support you, think about how they laid the foundation for your success. To all the friends and families, on behalf of each and every one of us graduating, thank you for being there. Legacy is often discussed using grandiose language with questions like, how do you want to be remembered? Or, how will you impact the world? To me, legacy is much simpler. Imagine yourself at a social gathering with a group of people. When someone leaves the group, what do you think about the person who left? Do you miss them? Are you happy they left? Are you indifferent? That, to me, is their legacy. I want to be remembered as someone who is respectful and who listens with a positive attitude. I strive to help people see the good in themselves and to empower them to feel good about what they do. Hey, could we speed up that teleprompter just a little bit? I'm just kidding, this is my teleprompter. As you walk across this stage in a few minutes, I ask you, I challenge you to think about your legacy. How do you want to be remembered when you leave the conversation? In closing, I offer these final thoughts. First and foremost, say thank you to everyone who has gotten you here today, who is responsible for you being here. It's the most important thing we can do. It is both scary and exciting for us to be graduating and entering the larger world. Be willing to try something new. Make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. Be optimistic. Optimism allows us to find joy in the most seemingly, find a purpose, excuse me, in the most seemingly joyless tasks. Being optimistic will give you the strength that you need to dedicate part of your truest self to your endeavors. Remember to look for the good in even the hardest times. Just like the sous vide egg, we all may look the same on the outside, but we have been profoundly transformed. We are eggheads. We will soon be called upon to mentor and guide the next generation and help them face their challenges. Above all, stay true to yourself, be humble, and be optimistic. Thank you very much, and congratulations, class of 2016.